In the spring of 1994, a young teenage boy named Aaron dies. He has been force marched into the Utah desert, and when he complained of severe abdominal pain, his handlers berated and abused him, forcing him to march on, at times depriving him of his sleeping bag in the cold night. This young man experienced an agonizing death from a bleeding ulcer in the care of those his parents had entrusted him and paid an immense sum to, all to address his lack of confidence. In late December of 2005, a young woman who had been considering starting a family attended a group training seminar that touted itself as subconscious reprogramming and how to free yourself from phobias, stress, and more. A day after the strenuous weekend-long event, she told everyone she knew that they should experience it as well. The very next day, she slipped into a psychosis, took all of her clothes off, and threw herself out of an office window ending her life. Her counselor confirmed she was not mentally ill. From 2006 to 2020, young girls housed at the Circle of Hope Ranch in Missouri were subjected to brutal punishments akin to torture. They were slammed face first into gravel and animal feces. They were forced to face a wall for hours at a time. Often, they were beaten severely or forced to beat each other while the owners allegedly engaged in sexual misconduct with some of their charges. To this day, many of them carry the physical and emotional scars of their experience. What do these three cases have in common, aside from tragedy? Aaron went to a wilderness therapy program the young woman who committed suicide attended a large group awareness training, or LGAD, and the Circle of Hope girls were part of the troubled teen industry, or TTI. Each of these are massively profitable genres of business centered around the betterment of mental health. Each of them are celebrated in the public eye as miracles or unbelievably effective and beneficial each of them have in some way enjoyed the luxury of public and governmental trust. And each of these industries are unregulated, and often the people who are in charge have no certifications nor any training in appropriate fields. But more than that, they share an insidious connection. But before we get to that, we need to understand the basics of what each is. Wilderness therapy is sold on the idea that children in crisis can benefit from learning survival skills and experiencing nature. This stems from widely reported success in programs from the 1940s and blossomed into big business. However, abuse and deaths, while rare, have happened. To this extent, the government convened a hearing to investigate the potential for abuse. Speaking for my wife and Aaron's mother, Sally, his brother, Jared, and his sister, Kia Sullivan, and speaking on behalf of the many families not at this table whose lives have been shattered by these fraudulent programs, we deeply appreciate your efforts to put a stop to this country's growing industry of institutionalized child abuse. Their answer? Publishing a list of questions for parents before considering such a program. Data collected between 1999 and 2006 showed that 40% of children who attend these programs end up sent to long-term behavioral care facilities. This brings us to the troubled teen industry. For the purposes of this series, we will generally lump wilderness therapy in with TTIs, but it is important to know the difference. 
and we will delve into those differences in the future. The TTI industry makes roughly $1.2 billion a year. Programs can range from part-time special classes to full-blown facilities where children are housed, cared for, and instructed. Success in these programs are varied, but stories of abuse and death are easily found if one browses Google for more than a couple of pages. These programs can also range from voluntary admission to staff at the behest of the parents abducting the child in the middle of the night and taking them away. Once there, oftentimes, especially in the more noteworthy and successful of programs, these children are subjected to therapies that can mirror what some experts have described as brainwashing. Nine-tenths percent of the people in this room told you they think you suck as a person, and that if they had their way, they'd cut your throat, put you out of your misery, and relieve the human race of having to deal with an ingrate like you. Don't worry, we'll get to that. But the road ahead of us is very long and very complicated, and we must lay each stone very carefully so we can understand the complete journey. Lastly, we have Elgats. Perhaps you've heard of some of these companies. Pathways, Nexium, Landmark, Gratitude Training, Ontocore, Human Awareness Institute, Tony Robbins. LGATs are seminars, or trainings, or coachings, or however they are marketed, designed around the core idea of a large meeting of many people willing to learn something they can't get in their regular life. And depending on how each LGAT is advertised, they can attract different crowds. Some specialize in corporate interests, others deal with attracting as many people as possible, and more often than not, those who attend LGATs for the first time do so because someone they know enthusiastically tells them how much it has changed their life. However, there is a darker side to these trainings, and as we examine them in further videos, we will start to understand that the methods employed by these seminars are not only suspiciously similar to each other, but often to methods used in troubled teen facilities. But why? Why are they similar? And furthermore, why is it so often the founders of both LGATs and TTIs often have ties themselves to companies and businesses that had to close due to controversy? And if we go even further back, can we find that their techniques share a common origin? The world of mental health is not always easy to talk about and families coping with children in crisis are just as much victims as the children when they are sold into a dangerous program. Good, rational, and intelligent people who fall for the mesmerizing abuse of an LGAT are not stupid. They have been skillfully groomed for a purpose, and the promise of a better you or a happier child is intoxicating. In this series that is launching with this video, we're going to examine every single aspect of these industries. We're going to come to know them, to understand them, and we're going to be speaking to and hearing the stories of the survivors. You and I will slowly paint a picture of how they connect and unravel how dangerous they can be, how unregulated they are, and how oftentimes city, county, and even state governments can play a part in these programs, putting people at risk. Welcome to The Troubled Truth. This video, as well as others in The Troubled Truth series and self helpless series, are being produced in collaboration with The Troubled Truth, a 501c3 company. And thank you for your time and consideration.